What's up guys, in the last episode we talked about the Terraformer War and also went into detail about the Argon, the Paranid and the Teladi. Now we will be heading to the year 2270 to talk about the split, the Xenon, the Gunners and the beginning of the Xenon conflict. Also, once again I'd like to thank you all for the amazing feedback in the first three episodes and on that note, let's get started. 2270 Under the rule of Emperor Thurrock, the Patriarch of the Split, the Split developed advanced rocketry. Before we go on, let's go into detail about the Split and how the Emperor gained his position. The Split are exceptionally human in appearance, with the main difference being the addition of an extra digit on each hand. Males tend to be squatter and sturdier, averaging at around 180 centimeters in height, while the female Split are usually a few centimeters taller, slender and ascetic. Despite the outward appearance, the split are in no way either anatomically or genetically compatible with humans as their chromosomes are not based on DNA. This also precludes any possibility of interspecies reproduction or hybridization. The average lifespan of a male split is under 50 years, while the female may expect to live for over 80. This great disparity is due mainly to the aggressive and dangerous lifestyle of the male split and the fact that they rarely attend to their health. The split home planet Hody is considered by many to be a legend. It was a small unfriendly planet circled by six grey moons and permanently shrouded in a poisonous grey mist. When evolution began on the planet, the creatures that came to be known as the split were not the dominant life form. However, due to their aggressive, ignorant and extremely cruel nature, they soon developed primitive weapons and became the planet's superior race simply by killing off every other living creature on their planet in a global nuclear war. Once they achieved this dubious honour, they turned their attention to attempting to organise themselves into some sort of a crude civilization. but due to their aggressive behaviour, they were not successful and a state of civil war existed for many hundreds of years. Eventually, from this chaos, Thurrock was a mighty war leader, emerged and through his strength, intelligence and cleverness, he forced the split into accepting a crude type of feudal government that was based upon a complex hierarchy structure, with himself as emperor. Under Emperor Thurrock and his successors, the split made great technological advances and eventually, after many abortive attempts, managed to develop a crude form of rocketry these crude rockets enabled them to reach and colonise their own moons sometime around the year 2270. 2272 In 2272, the government of the exiled humans is relocated from Taurus to Argon, and from that point on, the planet is known as Argon Prime. Also, the Argon colonies grouped themselves into the United Planetary Federation, which was then later called the Argon Federal Government. 2300 in 2300, the Paranids meet the Argons, and after many years of tentative diplomacy, the first formal meetings with this first alien race occurred. Properly named the Paranid, the race was quickly dubbed Three Eyes by less polite Argon. Treaties for trade and information exchange were negotiated, and both species benefited from the technological and cultural opportunities these allowed. 2330 by 2330, reports began to emerge of unidentified spaceships appearing on the outer edges of the Argon Federation. These reports increased until the unidentified ship began attacking and destroying the Argon ships. It is supposed that these ships are terraformers that survived and reproduced somewhere. In the common language, these attackers are now called the Xenon, which is Greek for alien. It is not known who thought up this name, but it sticks quickly. Right, there isn't a lot of detail about the Xenons, so let's get some background on them anyway. Today the Xenon are somewhat of an enigma. There is no known contact between the Xenon and any other race. They do not use credits, nor it is known what, if any, currency is used at all. They appear to have no interest in technology or trade with other races. The location of the Xenon home planet, if there is one, has never been discovered in spite of many attempts to do so nor does anyone know the exact size of the territory that the Xenon control. Hence, on most star maps, possible Xenon sectors are only marked with a question mark or a warning to be cautious. Very few ships dare to adventure into these regions of space, and regrettably, many ships brave enough to do so have never been heard from again. The Xenon, if the robot psychologists are to be believed, 
seem to be ever increasing in self-awareness, consciousness and understanding of themselves. 2368 in 2368, an Argon history student named Martinus Sanders wants to revive the memory of Earth and have its history and time counting back in place, but most people regard him as a lunatic. 2370 In 2370, the split meet the Paranids and the Xenon. 2372 In 2372, the history student Martinus Sanders forms the Truth About Earth Foundation. Consisting of a group of no more than three people, nobody really listens to them, but Sanders was not to be deterred. But with his character stubbornness, he managed to make contact with Nyana Gunn, a great-granddaughter of the hero Nathan Argon himself. Nyana Gunn, taking her first steps into politics at this time, was less than overwhelmed by Sanders and his ideas, and went on to give an interview in the year 2375 which stated, Martinus Sanders is a weirdo, a fanatic, and this time next year, nobody will even remember his name, I'm certain. 2376 By the year 2376, Xenon attacks are not so rare anymore, and somewhere speculation occurred that the Xenons are preparing for war. Nyana Gunn finds logs of her ancestors in which he pleads to destroy the Earth Gate, as not to give away human technology to the Xenon that could betray the secret of the Jump Gate and endanger Earth. Because of this, Martina Sanders and Nyana Gunn meet once again because they find that their both goals are compatible and they begin to fall in love. 2377 in 2377, Nyana Gunn and Martina Sanders are able to buy a 250-year-old former Earth fleet ship and go searching for the Earth Gate 2. They are in a crew of six, Martina Sanders, Nyana Gunn, Randall Nidong, Jidlak Adreju, Sonja Kadir and John Mantle. To honor Nyana's great-grandfather Nathan R. Gunn, the old ship is dubbed AP Gunner and the six crew members, all of them friends, like to call themselves Gunners with Pride. 2378 On the 23rd of July, 2378, Nyana Gunner Martinez Sanders undertook a standard four-year marriage contract, which is due to be renewed in four years. 2381 By 2381, Xenon attacks are getting more and more aggressive and destructive, and as a result, the Argons begin preparing for war. At the same time, the AP Gunner finds the old Earth Gate and destroys its electronics thoroughly, while leaving the hull untouched. They put an inscription on the lid inside the gate's machinery, explaining who, when, and for what reason the gate has been destroyed. With the pictures of the Earth Gate, Martinus, Nyana, and the rest of the Gunners are able to convince quite some people in between the years 2381 and 2384. At this point, the Truth About Earth Foundation now has over 100 members. With numbers still increasing, and a file is created by the Gunners to collect all known facts about Earth, it is called the Book of Truth. 2384 In 2384, an Argon ship was attacked by Xenon but survived, and the survivors reported the first sightings of their attackers, who are now positively identified as terraformers, but somehow modified, mutated, and with more different shapes than had ever been constructed. 2385 The year 2385 saw the first major military confrontation with the Xenomorphs since the separation from Earth. At the same time, Argon officially declares war on the Xenon. This would become known as the first Xenon conflict. Nyana Gunn is believed to be aboard the ship named Antigon and is sadly killed in the Xenon conflict, while her husband Martina Sanders resides on Argon Prime. 2387 In the year 2387, the ship AP Gunner with their crew gets lost and was never again seen, and the Xenon conflict gets worse over the years to come, very slowly though. Right, that's where we're going to leave it for today. I haven't done the research for the next episode yet, but I will, um, so I don't know what's happening in the next episode, uh, but no doubt it'll be quite interesting just as these episodes have been so on that note if you all enjoyed please hit the like button subscribe share this video if you can it greatly helps our channel and i'll see you in the next one peace